Hey, this is Aiden Ullier of FEI TV. Here today at Barrison Dressage, we're in New Jersey, and we're about to meet with Daryl Homer, the first American to ever win an Olympic medal in the Sabre. I bet you're wondering what you're doing here today at a barn. <laughs> yeah, I know, it's my first time. <laughs> well, when I'm explaining my sport of dressage to people, we usually say one of two things. Okay. It's horse ballet, or we explain how dressage was brought out of the training for cavalry officers. Okay. Back in war times, we would have swords and be fighting our opponents from the ground, and then eventually, when it wasn't needed in war, it became a sport. Yes. Much like I feel how fencing has become. Yeah, it seems like I can learn a lot about my sport from this too, so I'm excited. We, we seem to have forked off. We started from the same root of in battle, and you became fencing and I became dressage. Well, you guys forked off. We forked off, Yeah, okay. you forked off, you forked off, yeah. Well, I haven't learned how to use a sword, probably a good thing, Yeah. <laughs> with my sport, but I really wanted you to come in and explain to me how we would apply sword fighting or using the saber into the dressage movement. All right, awesome, look forward to it. So I did a little bit of research, right? And some of these movements are in French, right? Yes. Okay. So it's pretty similar to fencing, because a lot of our movements, we have the prise de fer, right? We have a prise de fer, which is when you take your opponent's blade. Oh. Okay, we have a paré repulse, which is a block and a repulse. Mm -hmm. um, so it's pretty similar. I think we have a lot of things in common. Well, dressage is actually uh, the French word to train. And a lot of our movements are French, okay. like pioff and passage and pirouettes. Yeah. And it definitely has the very similar root. So what are we about to go do now? We're about to go see the movements in dressage and how we apply them to cavalry officers' training and with the saber. All right, cool, cool. Sounds cool. All right, excited. Let's go. We are at Michael Barrison's farm in New Jersey. Uh -huh. And this is a typical layout for barns. We have wide open spaces, uh -huh. big stalls. We like to have, keep an airy kind of feel to it. Okay. Horses don't need to stand inside stalls for 15 hours a day, so we'd like to get them out and moving around because they're typically grazing animals. Cool. So they're out 24 hours. Amazing. But as athletes, we have to keep them more protected. So we tend to keep them in stalls during the daytime and then come them, take them out for athletic things. Cool. So now we're headed to the arena. Ooh. So he's holding the whip. I have a saber, mm -hmm. and the only difference is, is that we hold it now like this. Okay. We forget the swords, and now we got a whip. <laughs> and then we're in here. Yes, we hold it down, and then we tap the whip where the end hits the horse's flank. Okay, like that. Yep, exactly. So Justin is about to do a canter half pass. Uh huh. This can be done at both directions, and it can also be at a slower gait called trot and to a flying change. So that's how we switch uh, leads. So you're cantering one direction, you're on the left lead, can, and then you do a flying change and switch to the right lead. Okay. So you can do those actually every stride or pick how many uh, strides you do. Like, so you can do one tempies, two tempies, three tempies, and so on. During war times, I think this could be done as you're fighting through the battle and then you want to change directions quickly. Uh, you can do a flying change and go the other way and attack somebody from a different way. Mm. One, two, three. Tempos, okay. Yeah, Same thing. see? Got it. Two, three. Eight. One, two, two three. Ooh. One, two. Now he's doing two tempis. Wow. Very nice. So this is the pee off. So passage is more forward, covering more ground. And pee off is more on the spot, but still maintaining the rhythm of the trot. So he's going in for a canter pirouette. It's a 360 degree turn around the inside hind leg. We don't want the horse stopping and sticking and turning. No. We want to still maintain the canter rhythm, but in a smaller circle. So in the cavalry, yeah. how would we apply the saber to that movement that we just saw? Well, if you're doing it one-handed, um, I mean, in most of the sword fighting movies I've seen, right? Uh, yes. Anytime the guy's on uh, or mounted on a horse, um, it's usually kind of a swiping moment, motion. Um, and actually this weapon is a saber. Um, it's the only fencing weapon that's a slashing weapon, a cutting okay. weapon. So this would uh, actually be used. No, this is actually the perfect one, which is actually something we use in our target. Uh, okay. Our target's everywhere from the waist up. Um, so that includes uh, the mask, um, the arms, so it would be a, a cutting motion. Okay, 
But um, the first thing we'll do is first position, right? So it's first kind of like a ballet position. It's like ballet too. Exactly. And then we have a movement called a lunge, which is pretty much the striking lunge. motion. Okay. And that's where you just kind of push out, like you're kicking a ball with the front leg, and boom, exactly. Okay, backwards. so I'll go forward and then... Yeah, yeah, yeah. you're moving forward. Smaller can, I step. can I strike you? Always you always want to move uh, like with small steps forward. Okay, now. sorry, my legs Same are really control. long. Yeah, it's all They're good. They're good for riding, maybe not for fencing. It's all good. <laughs> step yep. back, then you move back. back. So we call this keeping distance as a training exercise. Okay. And then the lunge is just a striking motion, right? So okay. I said the target is everywhere in my weapon from the waist up. Okay. They can hit you here, they can hit you in the head. You're not allowed to hit me here. at the knee? Nope. Okay. You can, you can, nope. Oh. <laughs> 